Okay, so I think why don't we go into the, the, the final session. Uh, I think that uh, th th this year uh, the, the algorithms are a little bit different. As I said at the beginning, uh, we'll have the US perspective followed by the European perspective. And uh, for the US perspective, hopefully, uh, Vincent, you thought about these answers, okay? <laughs> so the first one is, uh, I'll, just, okay, I'll just take it and read you through it, okay? And you can comment. So when should treatment be initiated? Potential new myeloma or smoldering myeloma? And so obviously uh, with a crab or slim crab, treat as myeloma, pretty straightforward. No myeloma defining events, what we discussed in the first session, smoldering myeloma, high risk smoldering myeloma or not high risk smoldering myeloma for the low risk observation. I think what we have and what we talked about is for the high risk, we have early treatment with Landex or Revdex or clinical trials. And uh, we had some discussion back and forth about that. So I think that it, in this case, it might be interesting to see what happens with the European perspective. And I think that uh, maybe, Philippe, you can comment. Uh, uh, the, the, the thing that you wanted to emphasize is the continued uh, op option for observation? Well, we discussed this point with Jesus. Unfortunately, Jesus is not able to attend the, the meeting today, but uh, as compared with Vincent, we are just proposing another box observation for high-risk smoldering myeloma, and we discussed this previously. It's not obvious to treat immediately uh, some patients uh, outside clinical trials. So. Any yeah, and part? I think as we discussed um, with what Jesus put up on his slide, um, it's a shared de decision making. You have to discuss the pros and cons, the data with the patients and help them make a decision. Some patients are very uncomfortable with wait and watch. Some patients are very uncomfortable with therapy. And so we have to take that into account, uh, uh, particularly given that they are asymptomatic and, and your treatment's only going to make their quality of life worse. Okay. All right, let's move forward. Frontline, newly diagnosed, transplant, no transplant. Do the new, no transplant first. And uh, I must say, uh, uh, Vincent, this was interesting to me. Uh, for the non-transplant, you have VRD for nine months, which is... Uh, <laughs> the SWOG trial. Hmm? Which is the SWOG trial. Yeah, no. Which you did. No. <laughs> no, no, uh, six months. Six is months. it six months? Six months? Yeah. Nine cycles. Oh, sorry, I meant he, nine cycles. He turned cycles. it upside down. Nine, you're talking about nine cycles. Nine, okay. nine cycles. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Six months. Six months. Uh, followed by LAN. It was actually LANDEX or DRD. So basically VRD or the, the Maya trial uh, results, okay? Then for the transplant, you have VRD or a da DARA-based quadruplet, uh, and then you have uh, auto stem cell, uh, maintenance uh, with uh, a PI-based uh, regimen for high risk, and then uh, only selected patients, VRD, four cycles, land maintenance, delayed transplant. Okay. Right, the, the, the preferred is induction, transplant, maintenance. That's clearly what we like to do. I'm just saying there are some standard risk patients selected young patients who really, really want to delay transplant, and for them, we, d we are still allowing that option because it's shared decision-making again, and we don't have very, very strong overall survival data that early is definitely better than delayed, so we do it. But if you're going to do it, you have to be careful that your facility can collect and store stem cells indefinitely and that you will do and follow through on the transplant at first relapse. Okay, so what happens when we go over to Europe <laughs> so, uh, maybe, uh, Philippe, you can take us through. So, on the non-transplant side, uh, you have uh, yeah. three options, yes? In fact, uh, more and more we are using uh, lenalidomide frontline in elderly patients. Lendex is approved. VRD is also approved, followed by Lendex, according to the SWOG study, your study, Brian. And uh, we are, well, choosing one versus the other according to frailty, comorbidities, and so on, as we discussed previously. VMP-DARA, based on Alcione, is also approved and reimbursed in some countries, but that's only a second choice. 
I guess, based on PFS and, uh, well, in Spain, well, Marivi was uh, the, the leader of the VMP-DARA study. So uh, in Spain, uh, VMP-DARA is widely used, but not all over Europe. As soon as Lendex DARA will be approved, I guess that based on the Maya study and outstanding uh, results, we are going to use uh, quite yeah. a lot of Lendex DARA to move up. But currently, this is the, the, the first choice. Okay, we have. and then for the transplant candidates, uh, you might, might lead us through some of the changes here. So obviously yes. for the induction. Yeah, for the induction, in fact, VRD is not approved in Europe for induction prior to stem cell transplantation, but in some countries we can use it quite easily in Germany, in France, etc. And if VRD is not available, we are using VTD or VCD. Uh, quadruplet combinations are not approved, uh, so we have to wait. KRD is not approved frontline as well, so we need uh, phase three trials for the approval of KRD. So here you have uh, the main difference as compared with Vincent is that we are very uh, mostly uh, proposing uh, frontline stem cell transplantation for all patients and no delayed stem cell transplantation. That's only out, uh, uh, inside uh, clinical trials that we are testing delayed stem cell transplantation. And for high risk disease, more and more, we are using LEN plus PI-based maintenance. Uh, we have the experience of the Emory's uh, group, for example, with VRD maintenance in 17P uh, deletion with quite good results. And for all uh, standard risk patients, LEN, uh, either until progression or right. fixed duration of two years. Yeah, so, so two drug, that's two drug, very similar to, to yeah. the uh, U.S. approach. I've but uh, a two-drug regimen in the high risk. Uh, but the, 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 the no delayed transplant, uh, that would be predominantly with a triple, uh, just with a triplet, not with a quadruplet, but perhaps. Okay. All right. So first relapse. Um, so first relapse, uh, not refractory. Uh, I think this is fairly straightforward. Uh, Vincent just talked about this, so I think that that's fairly clear. Uh, and for the refractory, uh, switching from revlimid to velcade or pomalidomide, and the other backup options, I think that's all uh, fairly straightforward. And then uh, for Europe, uh, do you want to comment on some uh, differences there? Well, DRD, uh, obviously, uh, when patients are not refractory to DARA, when reimbursed and available, is the first option. But in some countries, we don't have access to DARA-LEN, so KRD uh, is widely used, associated with an overall survival benefit. We are using quite a lot of KD, in fact, in Europe as well. And uh, we are going to hear next Tuesday as a late breaking abstract, KD DARA uh, versus KD, the, uh, uh, the Kander study, Saad Usmani, uh, will present those data, important ones to my opinion, so uh, potentially KD DARA after approval. Okay, and then for refractory to lenalidomide, obviously. And when uh, for, okay when patients are refractory yep. to len, uh, very similar to Vincent, VD DARA is, is a good option. But Vincent did not mention POMVD, and we are using POMVD that is approved in Europe based on the optimism study published this year by Paul Richardson. So POMVD is widely used, and we know that at the time of the first relapse, the PFS of POMVD is 18 months. So that's maybe a difference as compared with your proposal. Otherwise, that's very similar. But KPD is not approved, KD DARA is not yet approved, but we have these options also uh, from one country to the other. Okay, so uh, second or higher um, options, I think again, uh, Vin uh, Vincent just showed these slides, uh, so I think that you can see what, what are those choices. And then uh, perhaps I'll just show these together. Uh, so uh, the additional thoughts that you would like to add there, Philippe. Um, well, we have the Icaria study for uh, second relapse or later relapses. Uh, Vincent showed the slide of uh, Icaria, uh, POMDEX versus POMDEX Isatuximab. Probably it will be the first approval of Isatuximab in combination with POM. 
Uh, otherwise, well, clinical trials always, if available, for sure. We can have access to the slides. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, let's see what we have. Okay, so those were our last uh, choices. Uh, so, uh, d d uh, Shaji or uh, Tom, do you want to talk about any issues on those algorithms? Uh, uh, Tom, are you, uh, and Shaji, you're solid, solidly US, you're not shifting to Europe? <laughs> no, 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 no plans. Um, no, I think I think it kind of goes back to the you know this is going to become more and more challenging as we have more drugs. I think you know sticking to that principle of changing classes of therapy and always using co drug combinations is going to be the the principle that will stand you know the test of time. It doesn't matter what drugs come and go. I think those principles will continue to be uh, important. The second thing we don't know much is you know what is the impact of we know the MRD is prognostic in this patient population, but in the relapse setting, some of the same principles that we are currently studying in the upfront setting also need to be applied in the context of clinical trials. When do we stop therapy? Um, you know, many of these trials have been dis are dis designed to be continued till progression, but I am sure there are patients in whom where we can discontinue therapy based on depth of response. So one point I just wanted to emphasize that, that came up, uh, those slides that you saw at the end and all of the other slides, they will be available online. So uh, you will have access to those slides, okay? I, the only thing I would also mention is as our therapies get better, and they really are getting much better, obviously, we do need to be able to do ex exactly what Vincent's been saying is to be able to take people off therapy. And so we have to use our, our best um, ways to measure disease, especially using MRD. And so let us do that at the academic centers and clinical trials and figure out you know, how to measure it and then what to do when we find that measurement. And is it going to be six months MRD negative or a year and then how to change therapy? But I do think that over time, hopefully we're going to be able to, to go with limited therapy rather than in somebody's 10-year myeloma history, they're on therapy for eight out of those 10 years. Maybe it can be a lot less than that, which would be great. Okay, well, thank you. So, so we've had a lot of information this afternoon. I don't see any uh, arms rushing to, to be raised. Uh, so uh, with that, I would like to thank our panel, our expert panel, for uh, fantastic presentations and discussion. And uh, thank you to all of you for being here. I uh, hope you, that you friend. found it worthwhile. And the slides uh, will be available soon, so thank you.